Hello student, welcome you to Mohan sir's classes. In this class, we will discuss and talk about chapter 2 of your social study textbook. The name of the chapter is Land Resources. This is the second chapter of Geography section. And in this video clip or in this class, we will discuss about Part 1 of Land Resources In this part 1, we will discuss about Different uses of land in India Different uses of lands in India That means How land is being used in India For different purpose and different area That we will be discussing Let us begin the lessons. Land resources. And the first paragraph goes like this. Among natural resources, land is the most important resource. We use land for agriculture, livestock rearing, mining, industries, transport, habitation, etc. Who owns the land? Is it being used judiciously and sustainably? Is it being properly conserved or is it being degraded? These are questions we need to think about and understand. So this paragraph says that among our natural resources, land is the most important resource. We know that in the chapter 1, we have learned about different kinds of resources. But among all the natural resources, it is said that land is the most important resource. It is not only said, but also we experience that land is the most important resource. We use land for agriculture livestock rearing, mining, industry, transport, habitation, etc. So, in this sentence, it is said that for what purpose we use land? There are different purpose we use land. First one. What is first one? We use land for agriculture. We know that all the agricultural activities which we do, we do on the land that's where land is used for the agricultural purpose next livestock rearing that means for uh, rearing or to uh, rear or to take care or to yeah to rearing uh, for the rearing or for take care of livestock that means what domestic animals we know that for rearing the domestic animals also we need land why because they want green pasture they want grass leaves etc for eating or for feeding that's why we use land third for mining we know that all the minerals which we get or we extract everything we extract from the land if you say gold silver or tin iron aluminum whatever may be everything we extract from the land next is industry that means we also use land for the industrial purpose that means almost all the industries are constructed on the land because if there is no land then we can't construct or build industry next is transport that means we know that there are two or th th three means of transportation one is landway other is airway, other, uh, the third one is what? We travel or we transport by the water. So, the major transportation is taking place on the land. If you talk about the vehicle, truck, bike, car, or you can say train, whatever it may be. So, all those things are run and travel on the land surface. Next is habitation. What is habitation? That means dwelling and living. Thing. If there would be no land, then how we could build the house and how we could survive. For making the house, for surviving or for dwelling, we need a house. And those things also what construct and build upon the land. So, 
these all are the uses of land in India or many of the countries. What are the uses of land? Land is used for agriculture, livestock rearing, mining, industry, transport, habitation, etc. Hope all of you understood. Next sentence. Who owns the land? That means who is the owner of the land? Next. Is it being used judiciously and sustainably? That the question goes like this. It is being used judiciously. What is judiciously? That means ethically. That means are, uh, are, uh, are we using properly according to the rules and regulation or we are misusing. Next thing. Next is. Is it being used sustainably? What is sustainably? That means are we being used this uh, land resource properly? That means we are using as much we want and we are keeping for the further generation or we are sustaining or we are saving for the future generation. Next question. Is it being properly conserved or is it being degraded? That means we are conserving or we are saving the land resource or we are destroying. These are the questions we need to think about and understand. So in this chapter we are going to ask this question and we will be think and we will understand about the land resource. First topic land uses in india land uses in india let us read and understand the first paragraph every country or province province uses its land in different ways some land is farmed some is used to build urban habitation some is used for industry and some is covered by forest so what does this sentence says? That means every country and province uses its land in different way. From the previous paragraph, we have learned that land is used by every country, every district, every states and provinces people, but it is in different way. Some land is farmed. Some is used to build urban habitation, some is used for industry and some is covered by forest. So as we read from the first line and understood that land is used in different way by different country, different provinces, different state and different st district. How? Some land is used for what? farming that means for agriculture or for cultivation and some of the land is used for building the urban habitation that means cities towns market complex etc and some of the land is uh, lands are used for what making the industry or establishing industry and rest of the lands are covered by the forest so these are the use of lands in different country different provinces different states and different districts next Land is the way the people of a country or province use their land. What does the sentence say? Land is the way the people of, country, of a country or province use their land. That means the land is used by different country and different province people in different way. That means all the country, all the provinces and states people do not use land in a same manner or same purpose different people different country different provinces they use land in different way land use keeps changing with time that means according to time the uses of land is changes that means if you talk about our forefathers our grandparents they use the land only for the agriculture purpose or making the house but if you talk about the present context and the future generation land is used in different way what land we are using for the agriculture we are using for what uh, cattle rearing we are using for making industry we are using land for the making what road we are using land for making what industry and different things so according to time 
द यूसेज ऑफ लैंड ऑल्सो चेंजेस द सेम एज अवर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स एंड फोर फादर्स यूज द लैंड द सेम मैनर वी आर नॉट यूजिंग द लैंड देर यूसेज एंड आवर यूसेज देर आर क्वाइट डिफरेंट दैट्स वाई दिस सेंटेंस इट इज सेड दैट लैंड इज यूज बाय द पीपल अकॉर्डिंग टू टाइम इन डिफरेंट वे नेक्स्ट पैराग्राफ इंडिया टोटल जोग्राफिक एरिया इज थर्टी टू पॉइंट एट एट लैक्स स्क्वेर किलोमीटर अंडरस्टूड टोटल जोग्राफिक एरिया ऑफ इंडिया इज हाउ मच थर्टी टू पॉइंट एट लैक्स स्क्वेर किलोमीटर नेक्स्ट ओनली नाइंटी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ दिस लैंड हेज बीन सर्वेड फॉर लैंड यूज सो आउट ऑफ द थर्टी लैक्स स्क्वेर किलोमीटर लैंड ओनली नाइंटी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ द लैंड हैज बीन सर्वेड फॉर वाट फॉर यूजिंग द टू डायग्राम बिलो एक्सप्लेन लैंड यूजेस इन द होल कंट्री एंड द चेंजेस इन लैंड यूज सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस बिलो द पैराग्राफ देर आर टू डायग्राम और पाई चार्ट हैज बीन गिवेन सो दिस टू डायग्राम गिवेन द एक्सप्लेनेशन अबाउट द लैंड यूसेस ऑफ द होल कंट्री इंडिया फ्रॉम द टाइम ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस अंडरस्टूड टोटल जोग्राफिक एरिया ऑफ इंडिया लैंड इज थर्टी टू पॉइंट एट लैक्स स्क्वेस किलोमीटर आउट ऑफ दैट ओनली नाइंटी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ लैंड हैज बीन सर्वेड फॉर यूज एंड the how the land is being used it is mentioned in the below diagram since independence let us look at this diagram first diagram speaks about land uses in india from 1950 to 51 second diagram says about land use in india 2010 to 11 so let us see how the land is used and the changes of land use in 1950 51 nine 2010 and 2011 let's see in 1950 to 51 the total agricultural land surface was how much 42% but 2010 and 11 it is increased that means 46% of land is used for agriculture that means 6% of land increased for agricultural purpose next orchards that means what fruits the fields where fruits are being cultivated In nineteen fifty to fifty one, seven percent of lands were used for what orchards, but in two thousand ten and eleven, how much only one percent? That means six percent of lands are decreased. Next is forest. In nineteen fifty to fifty one, fourteen percent of lands were covered with forest. How much fourteen percent of land? But Two thousand ten to eleven, how much percent? Twenty three percent of lands are covered by forest. Next, pasture. That means green grassland. In two thousand sorry nineteen fifty to fifty one, two percent of lands were used for or two percent of lands were covered with green pasture. But nine two thousand ten to eleven, three percent of lands were covered with green pasture next in 1952 51 of land were barren what is meant barren that means what a unfertile land but in 2010 11 it decreased now only how much it is 10% of lands lands are barren next is fallow There were ten percent of land, but now it is decreased to eight percent. Next is non-agricultural land. Before it was four percent, but now it is increased how much? Nine percent. So these are the two diagrams which gives information about how the land is used earlier and at present context. 
it is according to census 2010-11 but if we make the census of 2020-21 it will be different again so this is the different way land has been used in india since independence as our main heading is land uses in india so the under that the first that is forest that means land is used for forest so let us discuss about this land with abundant vegetation is called forest what is forest land with abundant vegetation is called forest that means the land where plenty or large numbers of plants are available trees plants herbs etc those lands are called what forest next sentence forest are a source of fuel wood timber roots tuber wild foods medicines fodder etc that means in forest what we get we get fuel wood that means firewood next timber and roots tubers wild fruits medicines fodder that means the food sake which we feed to domestic animals all these things we get from where from the forest next in the last 60 years india's forest land increased from 40% to 23% understood after the independence that means last 60 year so forest land how much were there before look at this pie chart 14% of forest land were there but now it is increased to 23% it is increased to 23% but this increase continued only up to 1970 to 71 so this increase of forest land increase from 1950 to 1971 since then the area under forest has remained more or less constant that means after 1970 or 71 the forest area either it remain less or constant there is no increases so in this paragraph we we'll learn that what is land land is a area where abundant vegetations are available and forest is source of different things like a fuel wood timber roots tuber wild fruits medicine and fodder and in the last 60 years indian forest increased from 14% to 23% but it is increase continually up to 1970 and 71 but after 1770 71 neither it is become less or increase it become constant next paragraph when we use the term forest land we need to remember that the term for refers to the land that should be used as forest so when we use the term forest land what is the meaning of forest forest land that means we need to remember that it refers to the land that should be used as a forest but this doesn't mean that all this land has standing forest when we are when we are using the term forest land that means it doesn't mean that all the land has standing forest that means the trees or the uh, forest has been standing for example in 2010 forest land total 23% but the land actually under forest co totally only 19.05% understood in 2010 we know that 1950 and 51 43% of lands were covered with forest but 90 so 2010 11 23% of land were covered with forest but out of that 19.05% were actually under the forest cover area the government undertake afforestation 
on forest land that doesn't have standing forest at present that means government has taken the step for afforestation what is afforestation that means planting the trees or increasing the forest it doesn't mean that all the forest has now standing forest or standing trees so in this paragraph we we'll learn that the term forest land refers to what not only the standing forest but it doesn't mean that all the land has standing forest so for example 2010 we had 23% of land which are covered by forest but out of that only 19.05 forest forest were trees were standing but now government has taken the step or undertaken afforestation that means planting of tree so, but it doesn't mean that all the forest have the standing tree now next paragraph forest provide us with produce like timber but the value of forest is much more than produce they provide we know that from forest we get many kinds of production so here it is said that forest provide us what produce like a timber but the value of forest is more much more than produce they provide that means not only what they provide that is the value but more than that forest has more value what are that let us talk and discuss next sentence plants absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and release oxygen during the photosynthesis we know that in our atmosphere we have carbon dioxide understood in atmosphere there is carbon dioxide Car carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide absorb or taken by the plants and through the process of photosynthesis photosynthesis there release what oxygen understood in our atmosphere we have carbon dioxide which is consumed or absorbed by the plant and through the process of photosynthesis they release oxygen this process helps to maintain the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere that means in this process which process that plants absorb carbon carbon dioxide and they release oxygen during the photosynthesis so this process maintain what carbon dioxide dioxide content of the atmosphere it also replenish the oxygen content that is essential for the human and animal respiration that means for to survive human and animal we need oxygen so if the quantity of oxygen decrease then our survival will be difficult that's why plants what do the what do they do they absorb carbon dioxide and they replenish or replace what oxygen and which is most important for human being an animal for their what breathing or we can say what respiration and without that without that neither human being nor animal can survive a stable oxygen carbon dioxide balance helps to stabilize atmosphere temperature that means a stable oxygen and carbon dioxide balance helps to what stabilize or to constant the atmos atmospheric temperature that is why forest are so important for our survival because of this reason forest are very important for our survival more than what they provide like a timber or you can fruits for fire firewoods or many kinds of things more than that forest has much more value and important why because if there would be no forest then we would not be survive why both for animal and human human being oxygen is important and if the quantity of oxygen decrease in the atmosphere then neither human being nor animal can survive so what happen this plants and forest 
they they absorb carbon dioxide and they replenish or release oxygen which is important for the human being that's why it is said that forest are so much important for our survival last sentence forest also help us to conserve our water source and are a habitat for wildlife that means forest also forest also help us to conserve our water resources or water sources we know that if there would be no forest there would be no rain water because we know that through the increasing or quantity of good forest only we get a good amount of rain water in same time forest also what happen they or the root or the tree, uh, roots of the tree what they control the water and if there will be no forest there will be no rain and there will be no habitat for the wildlife as we live in the house or in our home seems like for dwelling of this wildlife or animals forest is important so if there will be no forest there will be no rain there will be no rain then water we may not be getting in same time there will be no wildlife loss of forest enters our air water resources plants and animals that means if you are losing forest then what happen our air water resources plants and animals will be what endangered that means it will be finished it will be destroyed so this is the importance of forest resource that means not only we get the timber fodder or we can say firewood or forest food etc but also what most important thing that we get oxygen to respiration or to breathe or to survive even forest is important for the what conserving the water in same time if there would be no forest there would be no wildlife and if we are destroying forest or if the forest is decreasing then it will be decrease or it will be what a uh, dust dust uh, it will be destroy the air water resources plants and animals next paragraph at least 33% of countries should be under forest cover to ensure environmental stability that means to keep the environment stability or stable at least we need to have how much 33% of land should be covered with forest listen carefully to keep our environment stable or stability at least we need to have 33% of land covered with forest but in 1987 only 19.49% of indians land was under forest according to the census or survey of 1987 how much only 19.49% of lands of india were covered with forest after intensive efforts total area of forest land increased to how much 21.23% in 2013 13 listen carefully after the intensive efforts or work the total uh, area of forest land increased from 19.49 to 21.23% in the year of 2013 next forest cover varies from state to state that means all the states have their different amount or different quantity of forest that means all the states do not have the same amount same amount or same percent of the uh, land which are covered by forest chatisgarh is among the states with high forest cover that is 41.75% of its area is under forest so if we talk about among all the states of india so chatisgarh is the state which has highest forest cover area how much it has 41.75% of land are under forest cover next sentence in contrast uttar pradesh has just how much 5.7% and 
ओडिशा हाज थार्टी सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स परसेंट लेसन केयरफुली छत्तीसगढ़ हाज हाइस्ट फॉरेस्ट कवर लैंड सरफेस हाउ मच फोर्टी वन पॉइंट सेवेन फाइव परसेंट बट यूपी हैज द लोएस्ट हाउ मच फाइव पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट ऑफ लैंड एंड द स्टेट ऑफ ओडिशा इट हैज थर्टी वन पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स थ्री सिक्स परसेंट अंडर फॉरेस्ट नेक्स्ट द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट सच एस नागालैंड मणिपुर मिजोरम मेघालय हैव द मैक्सिमम फॉरेस्ट कवर रेंजिंग फ्रॉम द सेवेंटी परसेंट टू एटी थ्री परसेंट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स ऑफ इंडिया व्हिच आर द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स ऑफ इंडिया सच एस नागालैंड मणिपुर मिजोरम मेघालय सो दे हैव द मैक्सिमम फॉरेस्ट कवर रेंजिंग हाउ मच almost 70% to 83% that means out of the 100% of india's forest land 70% to 83% of lands or the forest lands are available in the eastern north eastern states of india so those states are nagaland manipur mizoram meghalaya etc but if we talk about the highest land cover with forest is in chatisgarh that is 41.75% and the lowest land or forest land is available in up that is 5.7% the second topic or the second purpose of land used is uh, land used in india is orchard it is what orchard what is orchard let's discuss and talk this category includes land covered by fruit bearing trees what is orchards that means these are the land surface where fruit bearing trees are covered look at this image these are the two what images are figure of orchards next over the last 60 years orchards in india have been steadily declared mac way for agricultural land that means if you talk of after the independence this orchards of india has been cleared orchards of india has been clear for what for making the agricultural land so according to the census or rip survey in 1951 there were 7% of land but in 2010 11 it is only 1% of land left for the orchards understood in 1951 out of the 100% 7% of land were covered with this orchards but now as the people declared the orchards for agricultural purpose now only left 1% of land for the orchards next is land of india is used for agricultural purpose land of india is used for agricultural purpose a large share of our country's land is under agriculture that means large amount of our india's land is used for agricultural purpose the majority of india's population is employed in agriculture which provides us with food grains and raw materials from industry so in this sentence it is said that majority of indians population they are where they employed they are employed in agriculture and it also says that it provides us food grain and raw material from the industry In nineteen fifty to fifty one, forty two percent of our land was agricultural land. That is, according to census nineteen fifty to fifty one, out of hundred forty two percent of our Indian land were covered or used for agricultural purpose. Today it is forty six percent. That means according to the census two thousand ten eleven. 46% of indian land are used for agricultural purpose 
the area under agriculture has been more or less travel since 1970 that means until 1970 it was more or less due to the expense of irrigation two and sometimes three crops are cultivated on the same land that means we know that now nowadays the irrigation has been increased because of the expand or the increasing of irrigation what happened in the same land we can cultivate twice or two or three times in a same land understood because of the expense of irrigation in a particular land per year either we can cultivate two times or sometime three times but 38.75% of our agricultural land is irrigated and can be multi crop total we have how much 46% of agricultural land out of the 46% of agricultural land only 38.75% of agricultural land is irrigated and we can cultivate two or three times rest of the land are cultivated once next non agricultural land in india this includes all the land that cannot be used for agriculture or used for non agricultural purpose so what is non agricultural land that means these are the land which cannot be used for agriculture rather they are used for non agricultural purpose how it includes snow capped mountains sand dune houses shops industry road railways market playground river dam etc that means what is non agricultural land the land which cannot be used for agriculture and used for non agricultural purpose those lands are called what non agricultural land this no, non agricultural lands are we can count or we can look at the points for what purpose it is used maximum non agricultural lands are covered with snow some of the non agricultural lands they are covered with sand dunes or we construct house we construct shops we construct industry we construct roads railways market playground river dams so these all are the land which are non agricultural land in this land we can't do any kinds of agriculture why because these are used for this different purpose some mountains are covered with snow some lands are covered with sand dunes some lands okay we are use we use for construction house shops industry roads railways market playground river dams so these are the non agricultural lands and they are used industrialization urbanization and the growth of transport has increased and land use under this category 4% in 1952-51 to 9% in 2010-11 as we know that day by day the industrial development is taking place urbanization is taking place that's why the growth of transport has been increased and the land is used under this category that means before for this non agricultural land 4% of lands were used in the year of 50 to 51 1952 to 51 but according to census 2010 11 9% of lands are used for the non agricultural purpose or non agricultural land next paragraph today there is growing demand to acquire agricultural land for industrialization and urban development so if we talk about the present context the growing demand of agricultural land for what it is for the industrialization and urban development that means agricultural land has been converted into 
industrialization and urban development. What type of land should be acquired for such purpose? That means for the industrial development or industrialization and urban development, what type of land should be used? What sorry? What is the right compensation for such acquisition? What is the right compensation for the such acquisition? These questions are uh, these questions are a matter for national debate. So such kinds of questions are what it is become a national debate and national discussion at present. That means, what type of land should be used for industrial development and urban development? And if you are using agricultural land for the industrial development and urban development, then what compensation should be given? And these are the question is the matter for national debate now. If fertile multi-crop land is acquired, there is bound to be a negative impact on food grain production of the country's food security. That means if you are using a fertile land where we can cultivate more than two and three times, if those lands are used for urbanization and industrial development, so it will be have a negative impact on food grain products of the country. That means if the agricultural land or the fertile land which produce more than 2-3 crops, if those lands are used for the industrial purpose and urban development, then the food grain production will be decreased. When the food grain production will be decreased, as the population increase, there will be shortage of the food grains in the country. So, it is therefore important to acquire only less fertile land for agricultural, sorry, non-agricultural uses. That means, in this sentence, it is says that if we want to use or establish industry and urban development, so better we need to what acquire only less fertile or the non-agricultural land. If we are using less fertile and non-agricultural land for this in industrial development and urban development, then it will not harm to our agricultural land or it will be not have any negative impact on food security of our country. How much compensation should farmer be paid for the land acquired for them? Now the question is that if we are uh, acquiring the non-agricultural -agri land for developing industry and urbanization, then how much compensation a farmer should be given? This question, also this question, uh, is also a matter of national debate. Again, this is a question that it has the national debate. That means if we are taking the agricultural land from the farmer for establishing industry and developing urbanization, then how much compensation should be given to a farmer? This is also what a matter for national debate. Changing land use make acquired land many times more expensive. That means if we are using the land or changing the land use, it what acquired the land many times more expensive. But farmers are compensated only on the basis of agricultural land price. But how much the farmers are given the compensation? Only they are given based on the agricultural land prices. They thus do not benefit from the enhanced value of land. So in this way, the farmer do not get any kind of value or benefit from the land. So, in this paragraph, we will learn that there are a growing of agricultural land or the demand of agricultural land for the development of industry and development of urbanization. But the question is that what type of land should be used for the, uh, this development of industry and development of urbanization? Next, how much compensation should be given to the farmer for this agricultural land so these are the question which is most important national debate at present answer is that or the solution is that less fertile and 
नॉन एग्रीकल्चर लैंड भी यूज फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्री एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अर्बनाइजेशन इफ यू आर यूजिंग फेरटाइल एंड मल्टी क्रॉफ्ट लैंड देन आवर कंट्री विल हैव ए नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट ऑन फूड ग्रेन दैट मीन्स द फूड शॉर्टेज वी हैव टू फेस दैट्स वाई आफ्टर ओके एक्वेरिंग दिस एग्रीकल्चरल लैंड इन टू लाइक ए इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट और अर्बन डेवलपमेंट फार्मर्स आर गिवेन ओनली लेस अमाउंट बेस्ड ऑन द एग्रीकल्चरल लैंड प्राइस एंड द फार्मर डू नॉट गेट एनी कैंड ऑफ बेनिफिट फ्रॉम द लैंड नेक्स्ट इज फॉलो लैंड फार्मर्स ऑफ एन लीव द लेस फेरटाइल लैंड फॉलो सो दैट द लैंड कैन रिकॉप इट्स फेरटाइल एट मीन्स मेनी टाइम वाट डू द फार्मर डू दे लिव द लेस फेरटाइल लैंड दे लिव द लेस फेरटाइल लैंड सो दैट द लैंड कैन बी रिकॉप इट्स फर्टिलिटी इफ द लिव और विदाउट कल्टिवेशन इफ द लिव फॉर सेवरल इयर्स दैन द लैंड विल बी रिकॉप इट्स फर्टिलिटी फॉलो लैंड कैन बी डिवाइड इन टू टू कैटेगरीज अंडरस्टूड फॉलो लैंड कैन बी डिवाइड इन टू टू कैटेगरीज वट आर दैट करेंट फेलो एंड ओल्ड फेलो करेंट फेलो एंड ओल्ड फेलो वट इज करेंट फेलो लैंड दैट हेज बीन लेफ्ट कल्टिवेटेड फॉर वन इयर सो करेंट फेलो लैंड मीन्स दैट the land has been left cultivated for one year that means for last one year farmers are not cultivating on that land this is usually done to said that soil can be accumulate humus which improves land fertility so why do the farmer do like that because if this year the farmer did cultivation and he will live for one year and after one year only when he will cultivate then the land will be accumulate or gather what humus and the fertility next old fallow land includes it has been left uncultivated for more than one year what is old fallow land that means the land which has been left uncultivated for how many years more than one year if old fallow land is not brought under plough it is counted as barren land about 8% of indians land is fallow that means old fallow land if they are not cultivated or not plough then this land is called what a barren land what is barren land that means a unfertile and almost 8% of indian lands is what fallow land so in this topic we will in this paragraph we will learn that farmers left this less fertile land for recap its fertility this fallow land are two types one is current fallow and other is old fallow what is current fallow that means the farmer left the land for one year without cultivation for what that the land should accumulate humus and increase its fertility but what is old fallow land that means it is left without cultivation for more than one year and if the old fallow land is not brought under the plowing or cultivation then they are counted as barren land and in india we have almost 8% of fallow land next is barren land this includes two types of land this barren land includes two types of land one is land with minimal possibility for agriculture this includes rocky hill land ravines etc so this barren lands are two types one land what is that minimal possibility for agriculture that means there is only a minimum possi possibility for doing the agriculture what are those land like rocky hill land and ravines etc these are the land next 
द अदर इज लैंड दैट कैन बी इम्प्रूव थ्रू सॉयल एंड मॉइस्चर कंजर्वेशन वर्क फॉर फॉरेस्ट्री एंड एग्रीकल्चर द सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ लैंड इज दैट इट कैन बी इम्प्रूव थ्रू हाउ थ्रू द सॉयल एंड मॉइस्चर टू कंजर्व वर्क फॉरेस्ट्री एंड एग्रीकल्चर दिस इंक्लूड्स द लैंड दैट वॉज एर्लियर अंडर एग्रीकल्चर बट नाउ बारेन so this type of land which type that means second type this type of land that means earlier it were used for agriculture but now it is barren this lands can be developed to meet the needs of indians increasing population as we know that our country india population is increasing so this type of land can be developed into agricultural land barren land has decrease from 21% to 10% over the last 60 years because of such land is now being increasingly used for non agricultural purpose modern agriculture and afforestation so from 1951 to 2010 if you see that okay in the last 60 years earlier 21% of indian land were barren but now it is only 10% that means this barren lands are used for what different purpose how it is used for the non agricultural activities like um, they are using for what also it is used for modern agriculture and government also what uh, taking the step for afforestation so in this paragraph we learn about barren land this barren land or we can say on fertile land there are two types one type of land what a minimum possibility for the agriculture such kinds of lands include like a rocky hill land ravines etc but there is one or other land it can be improved through what soil and moisture then we can start for forestry and agricultural purpose and this type of lands earlier they were under agriculture but now they are barren and this land can be developed to meet the need of indians population as it is increasing if we talk about the barren land of india in the year of 2050 51 it was 21% but according to census 2010 11 it is only 10% that means such kinds of lands are used for what non agricultural purpose and it also can be used for modern agriculture and it can also used for what a forestation and the last type of land which are available in india or land is used is india is pasture land this includes all land under the permanent pasture and all kinds of grazing lands what is pasture land that means what a green grass or the green area where we can graze our cattle look at the image we can understand this kind of such kinds of lands are called what pastoral land these lands are for common use by the people such kinds of lands are used uh, it is used commonly by the people they are used to graze livestock and to collect fuel wood such kinds of pastoral land it is used for what for the grazing livestock or to feed the domestic animals we use such kinds of land in same time we also use for the collect fire wood the area under pasture in india increased between 1950 and 1970 but then decreased over the past 40 years this pasture land in india from the uh, from the year of 1952 to 51 to 1970 to 71 it is increased but after 1971 to 2010 11 it is decrease the decline in pasture land affects the poorest people of the most because livestock rearing and agriculture are their main source of income so when the past 40 years this pasture land decrease is affect the poorest people those who are rearing the cattle and doing their agriculture 
इट एफेक्ट टू देयर सोर्स ऑफ इनकम द मेन रीजन फॉर देयर डिक्लाइन इन पैसेजर इज एनक्रोचमेंट बाय द पावरफुल फार्मर्स एंड कन्वर्सेशन सॉरी कन्वर्सन ऑफ सर्च लैंड फॉर ऑल्टरनेट यूसेस सो वाई दे फेस सच काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम और सच काइंड ऑफ लैंड डिक्रीज बिकॉज ऑफ वाट एनक्रोचमेंट ऑफ द पावरफुल फार्मर्स दैट मीन्स पावरफुल फार्मर्स दे ऑक्युपाइड दोज प्लेसेस एंड दोज लैंड ऑल्सो वाट कंसर्व फॉर वाट डिफरेंट यूज ऑल्टरनेटिव यूज दैट्स वाई द फार्मर और दिस पुअर पीपल फेस द प्रॉब्लम सो वाट इज पैसुअल लैंड दैट मीन्स द लैंड हुईच इज used for grazing land and for collecting firewood and this is mostly used by the poorest people from 1951 to 1971 the pastoral land increased but after that till 2010 it is decreased and it is mostly affect the poorest people those who rear the cattle and do agricultural activities as their source of income the main reason is that it is what occupied by the powerful farmers and they conserve those land for the alternative uses so in this topic or in this class we learn that different uses of land in india so first we discuss about forest land that means land of indias are used for what forest purpose second we learn that for for land of india is used for agricultural purpose next we learn that fallow land next barren land and at last we learn about the pasture land rest of the chapter will be discussed in the part 2